Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. What you're looking at here is a chart of the dollar yen. We are on the 10 minute chart, and we have recently penetrated the one of the key levels in the dollar yen is the 80 level. I'm going to show you when I go farther back out to the weekly and daily view to show you how key this level is. And we may be seeing, there have been hints at the central banks doing some intervention in this currency cross. This level is a critical level for the dollar at 80 yen, and it's been so for a very long time. One of the key signatures of central bank intervention, this may, this would occurred on the 3rd, may or may not have been so. And I'm going to cover an interview with Jimmy Rogers that, that uh, occurred recently about this topic. But back in his interview in Market Wizards, Jimmy Rogers was asked the question, well, how do you deal with central bank intervention? And his answer was, well, you wait for the rally and then you go the other way because generally central banks are almost always wrong because they're trying to fight the tide they're trying to most of the time central bank intervention is an attempt to fight the fundamentals they're trying to prevent the market from going a direction that the fundamentals would take it so if you look at this instance here this may or may not have been central bank intervention but it has all the hallmark signatures of it and one of the keys is to when you have a rapid move they jump in and move it all the way back to where it came from so they make sure that any speculators that are involved for example with this one this was probably a key point if you went further back but you have a pretty serious support line breach there you had some signals here that it was probably going to go lower a little bit of a rally and so most of your technical traders jumped on this when it broke down and of course the central banks will punish them for trying to make a profit by betting on the fundamentals and central banks don't like that central banks don't like people making a profit from their inevitable disasters that they cause so they all band together to try to punish speculators and speculators are the only bad guys in the markets of course we know that speculators are actually good for markets because they provide liquidity but the central banks don't like speculators and so they try to punish them if we go further out in this cross we can see the major central bank intervention that we had at the Fukushima disaster and that was when I remember I did an update on that saying that it appears that the yen carry trade is collapsing of course the very next day they announced coordinated central bank intervention to support the Jap the way they phrased it is kinda of interesting they said it was to support the Japanese economy but let's think about this a little bit the Japanese have experienced a tremendous destructive wave of nature's calamities they've had the tremendous tsunami and then following that the earthquake which resulted in the destruction of those nuclear power plants and meltdown and all kinds of mess like that so Japan is gonna to have to spend a lot of money to recover from this and rebuild and I guess the reasoning is that since Japan is going to need to do all this rebuilding they're gonna be able they're gonna to want to be able to generate as many export revenues as they can to be able to pay for this rebuilding I guess that's the I don't know I guess that's the party line but if you think about it if the Japanese yen appreciates same argument with the Chinese yuan, if if their currency appreciates versus other currencies then what that does is it actually makes it cheaper for them to buy oil raw materials all their imports become cheaper because their currency is stronger so 
one could make the argument that it would actually be in Japan's interest to have their currency strengthened against other currencies so that they would be able to buy all the raw materials that they need to rebuild their economy cheaper than they would otherwise. So for that reason, I don't really put a lot of stock into the argument that this central bank intervention occurred because they were trying to help Japan. It seems to me that they were trying to help the dollar. And that's a little bit of what we saw today. If you look back on this chart, we can pull it all the way out to the monthly, in fact. We pull it all the way out to the monthly. You can see that this chart is, that's my cat in the background, so I'm going to have to ignore him. But this chart is showing support around this 80 level that was touched all the way back in 1980, 1995. And that is really key for the dollar. There's a lot of things that could happen if we penetrate that low. And you can see Fukushima shows up as a little blip here down below that line. And you can see we're back up to that line. So central banks are defending this point. And it is a key technical point. And you probably would see if this line were broken, you'd probably see sellers pile on to sell the dollar against the yen. And so that's why that's a key line that uh, is watched by all the traders. Now, again, this is... These are fiat currencies that are measured in terms of each other. So it's generally a race to the bottom with all these currencies. And I wanted to show that by pulling up the gold charts in the various currencies because those charts show you more of what's actually happening to all the currencies relatively. So let's go through each of these individually and just compare their differences. Our first chart is gold in the Australian dollar. And we're sitting on the monthly. So we'll go ahead and leave it on the longest view. On the monthly in the Australian dollar, you can see we have a nice strong uptrend and an interesting type of rising pennant formation. So you can see that and a near cross in the MACD. So you can see that the chart for gold in the Australian dollar is extremely strong. Our next currency is the Canadian dollar. And again, the trend is very strong. It's an increasing trend line that is approaching parabolic. So it's getting stronger, very strong in the Canadian dollar. This is gold in the Swiss franc. Now this is one of the only ones that there's the slightest bit of weakness. And gold is starting to form a kind of downside pennant formation in the Swiss franc. And you can see the MACDs rolling over to the downside in the Swiss franc. The next currency is the Euro. And gold is extremely strong in the Euro. It's not as strong as some of the others and it seems to be crossing over in the MACD. But you can see these previous ones, it just kind of touched it and rallied, touched it and rallied, touched it and rallied. So we may see that again. The next currency is the Great British Pound. And again, gold is extremely strong in the pound. And then we want to look at gold in the Japanese yen. And that one is showing a little bit of weakness, but it's still very, very strong. So as you can see, all of the currencies are falling compared to gold. 
The last one is gold in the U.S. dollar, which is one of the strongest. So, again, looking at currencies like the U.S. dollar Japanese yen cross, you have to remember that even though relative to each other, one may be falling, one may be rising, ultimately what we're seeing is all of the fiat currencies are going to zero against gold. So they're all getting weaker. It's a race to the bottom. They're all, it's only a matter of when central banks intervene, such as what they're doing right now with the dollar yen cross, it's just a matter of trying to prop one up against the other. But ultimately, they're all going to fail. And the key indicators that show that they're failing, of course, are silver and gold. And as more and more investors pile into silver and gold, those currencies fall harder and harder and some just fall harder than others so you have to remember that we're looking at a race to the bottom with the currencies and you can't gather much information by their relative performance because their relative performance is just against each other and not against something real like gold and silver so I mentioned Jimmy Rogers before because he had he had talked about in his interview his strategy for going against central bank intervention and how he did it basically wait for the rally and go the other way and he was interviewed recently I want to read this interview to you because it's a excellent interview and Jimmy Rogers has been consistent I don't know if all of you have followed him but he has he has just a little history of Jimmy Rogers so you understand. Jimmy Rogers founded the Quantum Fund and his partner was George Soros. A lot of people credit Soros with some kind of genius or something like that, but it's really not the case. Their arrangement was pretty much that Soros was the trader. In other words, he executed the trades that uh, the hedge fund put on it, and it was a hedge fund that they operated. They started with roughly about a thousand bucks in 1968 and ran it into multiple billions. Uh, this was primarily not from taking investor money, but it was primarily, in fact, they closed it different times to new money. It was just by returning consistently 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent returns year after year after year after year. So Jimmy Rogers is truly a self made billionaire. And uh, he doesn't need to buy into all the lies. He doesn't need to ask for political favors. He doesn't need to do all those things. He's kind of like a modern-day Jesse Livermore. He, he's not technical. He's kind of the opposite from Livermore in the sense that he's totally a fundamental trader. He doesn't use any technicals whatsoever. He bases all of his trades on the fundamentals, while Livermore, on the other hand, was totally a technical trader although he did a couple fundamental trades but primarily a technical trader so they're complete opposites in their style of trading but they are identical to each other in that they are both self-made and they have become tremendously wealthy just by their abilities to be correct about markets so if you want to listen to somebody you definitely want to listen to Rogers because he knows what he's talking about so I'm gonna jump into this article the US is approaching a financial crisis worse than 2008 Jim Rogers chief executive of Rogers Holdings warned CNBC Wednesday the debts that are in this country are skyrocketing he said in the last three years the government has spent staggering amounts of money and the Federal Reserve is taking on staggering amounts of debt when the problems arise next time what are they going to do they can't quadruple the debt again they cannot print that much more money it's going to be worse the next time around the well-known investor believes the government won't shut down in august if agreement isn't reached on raising the debt ceiling but he did say draconian cuts are needed in taxes and spending especially military spending Quote, we've got troops in 150 countries around the world. They're not doing us any good. They're making enemies. They're costing us a fortune, he said. Rogers said he is not long anything in the U.S. and short on the American tech stocks. He owns Chinese stocks as well as commodities and would love the world 
price of silver and gold to come down so he could pick up the phone and buy more. He said he, he owns Chinese stocks, currencies, and commodities, adding the Chinese yuan will be a safer currency than the dollar. The U.S. is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, he said. The debts are going through the roof. Would you keep lending money to someone who's spending money and not doing anything about it? No, you wouldn't. The pound sterling lost 90% of its value when it was no longer the world's reserve currency, he said, and the dollar will too. In keeping with his philosophy, he said he owns the U.S. dollar and is waiting for a rally. If it doesn't happen, I'll have to ta sell and take my losses. He called the Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke a disaster who has never been right about anything since he's been in Washington. I hope he doesn't come back with QE3, but that's all he knows. The only thing he knows is to print money. He predicted that after the Fed ends its quantitative easing program known as QE2 this month, it may come back under another name. They're going to bring it back because Bernanke will be terrified and Washington will be terrified, he said. There's an election coming in November 2012. Washington's going to print more money. And that was on CNBC. I couldn't agree more. I don't think this is going to be a 2008 crisis. And... I think they're doing everything they can to prop up the dollar versus some of these currencies. We've seen tremendous weakness also against the Swiss franc. And you can see this is getting dire here, this type of fall that we're having. It's a rounding off type of fall. And it's just dropping really fast against the Swiss franc. So the dollar is getting rapidly weaker it's even getting weaker against the euro they had a little bit of a euro scare and they pull that rabbit out of the hat that gre that rabbit of the pig nations in Greece every time they want to scare away money from the euro but ultimately it's the US dollar that is going to zero in my opinion going to zero first because in my opinion it's the weakest currency in the world besides maybe some third world nations the fundamentals behind the dollar are just absolutely horrific and we're just piling up debt as far as the eye can see with no intent on paying it back and no intent about doing anything about it so I think this chart I think at some point soon you're going to see a breakdown and we're gonna penetrate down through this support at 70 and a half and then it's going to be off to the races I think we're going to be heading into serious new lows for the dollar and maybe even a catastrophic move in the dollar down to possibly even the 60s or the 50s we don't know but I think it's going to be a catastrophic move when that occurs I think silver will perk up again, continue its rally. It's overcoming a tremendously overbought condition you can see on this chart of 5. We've already cut that in half now. We're at 2.5 on the MACD. So we've taken away half of our overbought condition, a more overbought condition than we've ever been in. And uh, it would not surprise me at all to see silver just turn around very soon, possibly at the end of the summer, but even possibly sooner than that, and then just rally into new highs. And we'll talk to you next time.